So if you have enough of these and enough businesses, you can basically just guarantee yourself two free tickets to Europe every single year. And I think that's the hook that we're gonna use. Hey, I'm Daniel, and if you guys aren't using business credit cards yet, business credit cards like this one, you are definitely missing out on a whole world of credits that you never even knew existed, including free travel to where the credit cards literally pay for the vacations for you, and then of course, access to a bunch more credits on top of your personal credits, because they are two separate things, and a bunch of other perks and reasons why you really should get a business credit card, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. But but you definitely don't have to have a business to get one of these credit cards. And that's actually something that a lot of people misunderstand and why so many people haven't yet applied for a business credit card. But just a quick run through, if you guys aren't familiar why credit card nerds like myself or other people who are really into collecting credit cards love business credit cards so much, First up, huge, huge sign-up bonuses. This is what lets you travel for free and pretty much pays for all your vacations. Second, you get a huge credit limit. Now, I wouldn't really do anything with that credit limit, but if you wanna have $100,000 in credits, business credit cards are essential. And third, they are completely separate from your personal credits, um, with a few exceptions, which we'll mention. So that is also another benefit. If you wanna have kind of like a second person that you're using um, for credit purposes, this is the business credit card is the way to go. So technically, if I'm being completely accurate, if you spend hours reading through the terms of use that these credit card companies put out, you really do have to have a business, but you don't really have to have a business. It's kind of like that Russian guy from like that one cartoon. I, um, I'm spacing it. How does the meme go? You have to have business but it doesn't mean you have to have business. Basically what I'm trying to say is that credit card companies will let you be really flexible with the word business and what exactly that means. But basically you don't have to have a million dollar corporation. You don't have to have a company at all. And you definitely don't have to brag about it on Instagram every time you start a multi-level marketing scam. Come on, people. For example, if you drive for Uber or maybe you drive for DoorDash or you walk dogs with that, like dog walking app, or if you have a multi-level marketing scheme, those all technically get you money and you are technically a contractor and you technically have a business and you technically should apply for a business credit card. Basically, if you mow lawns, boom, business. If you cut your friend's hair for 10 bucks, boom, business. If you babysit once, boom, business. If you sell cabbages, boom, <laughs> business. If you scam a scammer, and make money from it, technically, according to the IRS, all forms of compensation are subject to income tax unless specifically excluded by the code. Ah, freaking boom, business. Business is technically anything that you do with the expectation of making a profit. And the key word here is definitely expectation, meaning you don't actually have to have started your business yet. You don't have to have made money yet. You just have to be planning on it in the near future to apply for a business credit card. And this is actually why most business credit card applications ask for estimated annual revenue. It's because they understand that businesses applying for credit cards and applying for credits are probably newer businesses and they haven't yet had a full year of income or maybe almost any income at all to apply for the credit card with. But before we get into the income, I kind of wanted to mention a technicality with business credit cards in that they sometimes can in a certain way affect your personal credit that you need to know about. When you sign up for a business credit card for the first time, they will do one look at your personal credit, meaning they probably will do a hard pull and it might drop your score just a couple of points just for a couple of months. But honestly, in the big scheme of things, that is not a big deal. And usually after that first look, they're not going to do anything else with your credits. They're not going to report to your personal credits unless you're using Discover or Capital One. But honestly, those two companies suck anyways. Don't get a business credit card with them. And there are banks that report to your personal credits if something happens wrong with your business credits. But that's only if you're really late on payments or have a bunch of delinquencies or are sent to collections with your business credits. Now, as far as actually getting approved for a business credit card, like going through the steps of the application and, and doing things strategically to get a really high limit, there are a few things that you need to know. Most business credit cards are gonna ask for your business name and your business entity. Now, as far as the name, if you're just driving for DoorDash, you can use your own name. If you have a business name that you have separately set up, you can use that as well. But for most people watching this video, I'm assuming that you're gonna be using your own name because you have business, but not business. 
Now, if you have an actual business with an actual business name, you can definitely use that as well. And then when it comes to entity, if you do have that business set up, you can select whatever it is, whether it's an LLC, an S Corp, a C Corp, a partnership, whatever it is. But if you are just a DoorDash driver, you can select sole proprietor and that'll cover you with your personal name. Now, the tax ID is another thing that people often mess up when applying for a business credit card. If you are a sole person, like a DoorDash driver, you can definitely use your social security number and it'll still be treated as a business. For example, with myself, I have a business credit card. I think it's this one right here. Yeah, this one's just under my name and I have my own social security number tied to that one, but I have another business credit card. It's literally the same exact one with my uh, business name plugged in there. It's an LLC and I went online and created an EIN for it. That's a tax identification code for a business, which is free to get and very easy. And honestly, I highly recommend it if you want more than one business credit card. Next is the business type and the nature of the business. And this is another place where people get a lot of things wrong just in trying to strategically apply for the business credit card to get the highest limit possible. Now, one of the first things they're gonna ask you is probably how long you've been in business. And this is definitely one of the most important parts to be truthful and as honest as possible on the application. Not that you'd wanna lie on any other part of the application, but just here, know that it doesn't make any sense to put five years if you haven't even started the company yet. They're still gonna give you a bunch of credits even if you put a zero here. Then the application will also ask you the nature of your business, basically just what you do to collect revenues. And they'll probably give you a really long list of options to choose from. And here you just wanna select the one that most closely matches your business. And it's important to understand the reason behind this. And it's that they look at the type of industry that you've selected. For example, maybe you're an educator. Maybe you teach guitar lessons or piano lessons or school tutoring or some other kind of lesson, they take that business code and apply it and cross-reference it against the amount of income that you make and the amount of cost of goods sold you report. And this is where a lot of non-professional educators get caught up and actually mess up their business applications is they over-report how much income they're gonna make or how much cost of goods sold they're gonna make and it isn't completely reasonable at all with what they're actually in the business of doing. Doing. Usually as a teacher, you don't have very many cost of goods sold, meaning your expenses are really, really low. You don't have anything to sell. And so business credit cards will deny you or maybe give you a really low limit with the expectation and understanding that as a guitar teacher, you're not gonna be spending $1,000 every single day. Whereas on the other hand, if you had a drop shipping business like Amazon or you wholesaled things, they would understand that your gross revenues would be really high, like, What's that mean with like $500,000 of gross revenues, but then your actual profit is like $2. <laughs> and basically with that business model, the credit card companies are gonna know that you're gonna be using the credit card more and are gonna need a higher limit than if you choose something like a non-professional tutor or an educator or a class teacher, something like that. Related to this is actually annual revenues. And this is another place where people mess it up. What they're asking for here usually is expected annual revenues. How much you project your business business to generate in gross. And if you haven't started your business yet, some people would put zero because they haven't made any money. But this is absolutely not correct. And this is not what they're asking for in most situations. Instead, you should actually project what you're expected to make in the first year of operating. So for example, if you expect to be one of those new dropshipping gurus making $100,000 a month, your total would come out to $1.2 million a year in expected gross revenues. <laughs> I'm joking, those, those guys don't make any money, don't do that. But I highly recommend using an honest, but if possible, very high estimate of what you project your annual income to be because this will impact how much credit you're able to get. And after this, they'll usually ask you about your business expenses. And this is another category where you wanna have a very high, very optimistic number. And having this number high is gonna show the business credit card that you have a lot of expenses that you're continuously putting on the credit card every single month. And I'm not telling you to lie on any credit card application ever. I, I wouldn't say that, but if I'm doing the numbers in Excel, you better bet I am rounding up to the nearest 10 cents on these expenses. But just remember, if you wrote down that you're a piano teacher and you're trying to get away with $300,000 of expenses every single month, it's probably not reasonable unless you were literally buying the gold pianos 
and they're probably not gonna give you the credit limits and they're probably gonna deny you for the card in general. They may also ask you how many employees you have. If it's just you doing your own thing, just put one. If you have a spouse that might be able to help you out, I recommend putting two because this will kind of boost the credibility of your business. So that's basically all you need to know about how to apply for business credit card and how to get the highest limit with it. But there is one more thing I wanted to mention about how these business cards affect your personal credit and why so many people get in trouble with them. Business credit cards will require something called a personal guarantee. And it basically just means that if you stop paying your business credit card bills, or if you default and your business isn't doing that good, that you yourself will be able to pay off these bills. And again, business credit cards are completely separate from personal credit cards, but it's this really small link between the two that you just need to understand and know about before getting yourself into trouble. Because I actually recently went through something like this with one of the businesses that I work with where an owner of two businesses had one business that was defaulting and getting sent to collections while another business was trying to apply for credit. And since he technically was a part owner in both of these businesses, even though he wasn't like the person, he did have a personal guarantee on both business credit. So he did have a little bit of overlap and that business that was trying to apply for credit wasn't able to get it because the other business was in collections. And this basically is just to protect banks so that they aren't giving out business credit to people who aren't reliable or maybe have other debts that they haven't been able to settle. It's just a way to protect themselves, but it definitely doesn't mean that there is a lot of overlap between the personal and business credit cards because they are otherwise separate. But it doesn't limit you to how many businesses you can have. And theoretically, you could have a bunch of businesses all with the same business credit card and have a bazillion of these and continue churning them for points and getting free travel. And if you guys want another video on the best business credit cards that you should try to apply for with your business, or maybe how to churn these business credit cards to continuously get yourself a bunch of free travel every single year, like I've been doing, just let me know in the comments section. I'll definitely make one of those for you guys. But thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I really appreciate you guys being here. And if you like the video, I would also appreciate if you could hit that like button because it does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. But then if you also hit the subscribe button and the bell notification, you'll actually be notified of when I put out my next video, which is definitely gonna be way better than this one. And I'll see you guys in that next one. I've been all in my bag. You been all in my business. You be all in your feelings. I've been all in them trenches, uh, I've been all in my bag, you be all in my business, uh, know they notice me flexing.